Hi everybody, welcome to Mentor and yet another video podcast. As always, I hope you're doing absolutely fantastic. So this is a short special that I thought of uh, basically just a couple of minutes ago because, hey, why not? Uh, I'm going to be talking about an incident I had recently while avoiding a thunderstorm, a CB cloud. So stay tuned. Wind 31016, everyone right, right on. Third one, three one right. Delta 216. Yes, sir, dude. Right, guys. So um, I wanted to talk about this incident because I thought it's important for people out there watching who are becoming pilots and people who are maybe already um, first officer or even captains. Okay, so basically. Um, Whenever we fly in conditions where we might encounter thunderstorms, we have to monitor our weather radar. It's very, very important to do so because sometimes we might be inside of a cloud and we can't see outside and the clouds can have um, these thunderstorms embedded inside of them. Um, there are some very, very specific rules in our operations manual and any airline you fly for is going to have very similar rules to, as to how close you can come to a thunderstorm without you know, encountering severe turbulence, potential lightning strikes, wind shear conditions and things like that. So in our airline, for example, um, a good um, number to remember is 20 nautical miles. We have to stay 20 nautical miles away from um, any thunderstorms that has red and magenta inside of it. If it's above 35,000 feet, as in the top of the cloud is above 35,000 feet, we have to be very, very careful. Once again, stay at least 20 miles away from it and always try to stay on the upwind side of the cloud. So uh, the upwind side is where the wind is coming from. That way, if there's hail, for example, inside of the thunderstorm that can be thrown up on the top of the storm cloud, it's going to be moved away. And any associated turbulence and bad weather that comes with it is also going to be on the downwind side. So we stay on the upwind side of it if we can. There are also rules as to how close a thunderstorm can be to an airport without, uh, without us, you know, without still being able to land. And basically there we have to, to look at the weather radar, we have to look at the situation, listen to the weather information we get from the tower. And uh, the rules that we have specifically says that if we have an active thunderstorm within three nautical miles from the center line or from the airport, we cannot start the approach. So why am I telling you this? Well, it's because I had a situation recently uh, when I was doing a training flight and um, we were, me and the first officer, we, um, we saw in the morning when we were preparing for the flights that the last flight of the day, we were doing four sectors, as in four different flights that day. On the return flight in our home base, Girona, there was going to be a high likelihood of thunderstorms. So we already knew at that stage that when we return, you know, it's fairly likely that we are going to get some kind of thunderstorm activity around the airport. Um, this very this happens all the time here in Girona and the Pyrenees, which is just behind the airport, they tend to give um, give kind of action to these huge thunderstorms that comes towards the late afternoon. So on the last leg when we were flying, we watched, we looked at the weather. And by the way, we get new weather for every flight we do. So we, we prepare the flight in the morning, but then for every leg we do, we get new fresh weather. It said that indeed there are thunderstorms around. So we decided to take extra fuel, which is something that we, we you know, almost always do. Well, we always do if we see that there is a chance that we might have to wait. You know, a storm cell is good in the way that it tends to be very, very local. Right? It comes, it showers, and then it moves. Okay, so that means if we take 20 minutes of extra fuel, for example, we, in most cases, we'll be able to wait outside of the area, let the storm pass, and then come and land. And if we can't, well, then we'll divert. So when we, uh, when we started getting closer towards the airport, um, I was looking at my weather radar, and I could see that this huge storm cloud was there. And you're using a combination of both looking at the weather radar, but also, of course, looking outside. And CBs, cumulonimbus clouds, they are very peculiar in the way they look. You can see them for miles away. They're, they're huge, tall, and they have this anvil at the top of it. So you can clearly see that, yeah, there is a CB very close to the airport. When we got closer, I saw that it was basically covering the final approach track. And there was no way that I was going to be able to fly into it with that red radar return. And I could also see visually that there was lightning there. So we um, adapted a hold outside of the area, out of the sea, and told air traffic control that we're going to be sitting here in the hold, waiting for the storm to pass, and then providing we have enough fuel, we will start our approach. 
While I was doing this, uh, and this is where the, the point of the story comes, another aircraft from another airline um, came in behind us. They were obviously it was the same type of aircraft, so they had the same kind of weather radar equipment as I did. And they saw the same picture as I did, but they decided that they were going to shoot the approach anyway. So while we were sitting in the hold, they descended in below us. They started the non-precision VUR approach uh, that we have to run with Zero 2 in uh, Girona. Uh, they flew straight through that weather radar return, that yellow, red and magenta weather radar return. And yellow and red basically means both a lot of precipitation, a lot of turbulence, magenta or a lot of potential hail and things like that. And magenta means severe turbulence. So that's what they were seeing. They flew straight through that and landed on the other side. And then they thought they were going to be helpful and called us up because they knew that we were waiting, saying that it wasn't that bad. It was a lot of precipitation, but we didn't have any wind shear or any lightning strike or anything like that. So it's, it's okay. Now, while that might sound like something helpful to do, um, my, the, you know, the situation that that put me in was that air traffic control obviously heard this now. Now, I am sitting out there and holding me in, in the way of other traffic, taking up time. Uh, so they started querying me if I was going to do the same thing. But the rules are there for a reason, guys. All right. Even though one aircraft might be able to penetrate a storm like that or fly under a storm like that without anything happen, that is by no means a guarantee for the subsequent flight not getting a lightning strike or a wind shear or something like that. And by the way, guys, I have slightly off topic. If you have the Mentor Aviation app, I've done a 360 video on how we do wind shear escape maneuvers, both in the landing and in the takeoff configuration. So if you're interested in seeing that, get the app, the, there are links down here and get the collection. And then you can see exactly how we deal with that in the cockpit. But anyway, so this put me in a situation where I felt pressure on starting the approach because air traffic control wanted me to do it. They also wanted to change the runway around because the wind was starting to turn uh, or because other, uh, the weather was actually worse on the other side of the airport and um, traffic was lining up to take off the other way. But I didn't do it. All right. I, con I talked to my first officer. We agreed that this is not something we're going to do. We're going to sit here and if this storm does not move, well, then we're going to divert to Barcelona. But the problem here is that if I were a slightly less experienced captain, or if I, um, if I, you know, trusted the guy on the ground, well, then I might have taken the risk of just flying through it because the other guy had done it. Obviously, that was not a problem for him or her. So um, I would have tried it, and I might have put myself in a position where I could have gotten a wind shear or a lightning strike or something, even though I can see, clearly see on my weather radar screen that there's hazardous weather phenomena in front of me. Now, here's the point, guys. The point is, A, don't do it. B, don't do it. No one will ever thank you for shooting an approach like that. Your chief pilot definitely won't because you're not following standard operating procedures. You're not following the operations manual. Your base captain won't. Your cabin crew won't. And your passengers definitely won't if you end up in severe turbulence or a wind shear escape maneuver because you elected to fly in to a red thunderstorm on the weather radar. So whenever you find yourself in a situation like that where you have to choose to maybe go for it or just stay and wait, stay and wait, guys. I can tell you from my own experience that the worst feeling when it comes to aviation is where you end up on a runway after an approach where you, which you shouldn't have done and you landed anyway. Okay, A go around or not getting yourself into the, um, to the approach at all is always going to be better. And even though it might be a pain to divert for everyone involved, it's still going to feel better at the end of the day. That's it, guys. That's all I had. I just wanted to make this video um, to explain these things for you. Now, if you want a written version of this with some more pictures and things like that, then uh, go into mentorpilot.com. Um, I do blog posts there, which are of a little bit more serious nature. So things about, you know, if you want to become an instructor and things like that. I do blog posts from time to time. If you haven't checked it out, you really should go in there. There's a chat in there as well that you can um, talk to other people in. And... Um, yeah, I hope you'll enjoy it. Have an absolutely fantastic day wherever you are, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.